next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, then. Oh! Ah! It was like a scream that I've never heard. A power saw goes out of control on Rescue 911. As one of the owners of a shop that made custom decks and gazebos in Rancho Cordova, California, Lori Berardoni was well aware that the work could be dangerous. But on the morning of September 10, 1991, she was reminded that when tragedy strikes, we can be called upon to do things we never imagined we could do. Twenty-year-old Doug Reams was the only other person at the shop that morning. I went back to say hello to Doug and see how he was doing. He told me that he had a terrible weekend. His dog got hit by a car, and when he went out to help the dog, the dog bit him. And so he was looking forward to getting the work week started. I went back to work. It was like a scream that I've never heard anywhere in my life. And I knew that he'd cut his hand off, even though I wasn't in the same room with him. Come on. Fire dispatch, what yes, is someone it? got off their hands. Calm down. What's the address? 3339. Three, Cut off your shorts. Now calm down. Listen to me. She was a little out of control. At times, you have to go through and really, you know, basically get in there and just tell them, look, you got to listen to me. That we're trying to help the person. And we need you to be calm so you can help them. Should do is wrap a towel around. I don't it. have anything. I don't have anything. Any paper towels or anything of that nature? No, toilet paper. No, that won't work. Call was taken by Sacramento Regional Communications Dispatcher Vic Boithier. We needed to get some direct pressure on that bleeding. Even a T-shirt or something of that nature. Yes, yes. Okay. How bad is the hand? Is it off? I don't. I don't know. Okay. Take it and wrap it up. Doug, in... don't move. I said, Doug, we've got to get off your shirt. So we took Doug's shirt off and wrapped it around the wound. What do you want me to do? What I need you to do is I want no. him to... I think he's going into shock. Okay, then we want him to lay down. Come on, Doug, I want you to lay down. Okay. Come on, let's lay down on the ground. I was afraid maybe I'd pass out. I don't deal with the sight of blood well at all, usually. He had probably cut through the artery because of the way the blood was coming out. Wrap it up. Don't put a tourniquet on it. It's got a shirt on it. Okay, wrap You don't want to tourniquet things. That's your last resort if you have to use it. Pressure, pressure. Okay. Okay, now I want you to do is I want you to lay him flat like he is. Okay. I want you to elevate his legs about 18 inches. Put your legs on the bench. Legs on the bench. There you go. It's okay. Okay. You're doing good work. All right. Come on, he keeps saying he's going to die. No, he's not. We're Come not on, Doc, it's okay. You tell him we're not going to let him do that. We're not going to let you. No, you're not. It's not bleeding. His eyes were starting to roll back in his head. And I'd say, come on, Doug, come on. And his eyes would come back. And I knew that if I lost it, that there would be no one there to help him. What do you do, cut it on a saw? Yeah. Okay, does he know how much he cut? How much did you cut, Doug? About about all the way through. Okay, he, the hand has not been basically amputated, right? It, it's through the bone. Okay, it's through the bone, so it's, it's hanging basically by the skin. Yeah. Okay. You just think about everybody that's on their way here and they're gonna take care of you. They got a whole crew coming. Atta girl. So I want Good you to work. just hang on. 
Come on, you know, you're not going to die. We're not going to let that happen. Good girl, Lori. It's okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. For years, home improvement shows have been geared towards guys. And I say, why should they have all the fun? Say goodbye to honey-do list, because on my show, honey, you do it yourself. Don't miss Tool Belt Diva, tonight at 9. Oh, just watch my show, Capiche Discovery Home Channel. You gotta watch it. Discovery Home Channel is available 24 hours a day on digital cable and satellite. Call today and ask for Discovery Home Channel. What? Sacramento County Fire Rescue Units were the first on the scene. Okay, they're here. Should I leave them here? No, no, no. no. I want you to stay on the line with me until they get here. Can I go out front and flank? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. They're here. Okay. He says it's through the bone. Right. It's through the bone. He's concerned he's lost too much we're blood. Gonna take care of you. We're going to take care of you. Okay. When I heard John's voice, then I knew she was in good hands. Okay. All right, thank you. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. Looking at the scene, the amount of blood that was on the floor and on the walls, I had estimated approximately 15% of his blood volume right there that he had lost. Oh. With arterial bleeding that within minutes a person could die from loss of blood, we virtually constructed a splint from the lower part of his arm all the way up to his fingertips with gauze pads and cling. Doug was very pale. He's telling us he doesn't want to lose his hand. He's telling us that he doesn't want to die. Doug was taken by life flight to the trauma unit of the University of California Davis Medical Center. His father, Russ, was there waiting for him. Before they took Doug into surgery, he looked at me and said, well, guess I'm going to lose my hand. I said, no, 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 you're not going to lose your hand. Everything's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. And the whole time I was thinking, yes, you are going to lose your hand. Chief orthopedic surgeon and hand specialist David Steinberg performed the operation. If this had happened 20 or 30 years ago, I think his chances of having a functional hand would have been greatly decreased. Technology has become advanced enough that we expect a fair degree of success from those operations. In the 10 months since his hand was reattached, Doug has regained partial use of it. Although no one is certain how complete his recovery will be, he's grateful to be alive. I was really scared. I kind of thought, I'm bled to death. Good thing Laurie was there. Really appreciate what she did. Couldn't have made it without her. I don't think I did anything extraordinary. I think I did what I was told. And I called 911, and that's the great thing. Once you get a hold of them, they'll tell you what to do. To me, that's all the gratitude I ever needed. Just as long as I know things have worked out and the help was there for them, that's what my job's all about, helping people. You can't be too careful when you're working around equipment like that. No matter how much of a habit you've gotten into doing this same thing every day, uh, it's still dangerous, you know, you really got to pay attention to what you're doing and take your time. From the very first day, I was teasing him about what a lousy way to get out of working for a living to try to cut your hand off. But the teasing is all a cover-up, so I don't have to really think what I'm really feeling. Uh, and what I'm really feeling is... I could have lost my son. Everybody involved. Really, thank everybody. <laughs> Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.